Hi, so today I'm going to be interviewing someone that is going to explain everything you need to know about a living trust. She helps people every day create them. And if you live in California and you own property, you really need to have one. So let's get started and let's talk with Carolyn Graber. So Carolyn, thanks for being here with us. Carolyn Graber, um, why don't you just start out by telling us a little bit about your background and, and what you do for a living? Okay, well, I fell into the legal business by accident, not by choice. Oh. <laughs> they say sometimes things like that work out, you know, really well. Exactly. Yeah. And I've been doing this for, gosh, um, I'm going to say 30 plus years because wow. I had my training in law firms. And where I really started from the core of started, where I started, that is, is at Paramount. I was in the uh, litigation department, bankruptcy litigation, learning the ropes. Wow. Contract law. So those skills helped jump me to downtown to where the big, the bigger law firms are to learn litigation, having that background. So it was just going from Paramount Studios as a paralegal trainee, jumping to downtown law firms and learning much, much more in, in depth with litigation. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's so. awesome. And so then that led you to doing your own business, I take it. It did. An attorney said to me one day, which worked out perfectly. I had a young son at the time and he said, you know what? You'd be perfect um, doing this on your own as a paralegal. Oh, wow. And I was probably one of the early birds of working from the home because everybody was still not, you know, in tune with that at that time. So I could get um, my son, Richard, to, you know, literally practice and oh. incorporate, you know, the clients, you know, I love it. Schedule, yes. And it was, it was scary at first because I thought, oh my God, I'm not on a nine to five position. And it was wow. back in the day when there was newspaper advertising. So I just kind of, you know, put the ad in and prayed to God and everything just seemed to take off from there. Oh my gosh. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you know, in my line of work, I meet people that, you know, most of the time they have a living trust, but definitely sometimes they don't, which mm -hmm. is just always kind of heartbreaking to be honest, but tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about what a living trust is and why someone should have one in California. Okay. Uh, living trust is really important to have because you, you do get, there are tax advantages to it. Oh. And it's like forming a corporation. Think of a living trust as like a family corporation. While you're living, you're putting everything into your trust. And that way it protects. And of course, people, the classic line is it protects you from probate. You know, if there's like a death in the family. And um, I have my own living trust and I have reasons for it because it protects me from certain situations. It's like setting up a corporation if you want the tax advantages. Think of it as a separate entity, entity if that makes sense. Okay. Right. You're not, you're not treated like an individual. Okay. You know, like a tax individual kind of thing. Because oh. corporations, when they set up, they, they set it up for tax reasons and, and you have that advantage. Okay. So hope that makes sense there. Yeah. 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 It's a long, it's a long answer, but it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. I kind of, I've always sort of thought about in my head too, is like a warehouse. So it's like a separate thing that I, you know, put everything of value into it. It's like if I own a house, cars, different bank accounts, mm -hmm. stock portfolios, everything. So it's sort of like if my house had the fire, really everything is all protected over in the warehouse or something. I don't know if that makes sense either, but you're yeah. saying it from like a yeah. corporation, same thing. It's like a separate thing that protects anything of value, basically. Exactly. Exactly. And so what I always say too, is if someone dies and everything is in the living trust in the warehouse, mm -hmm. basically you give them the keys to the living trust and they can, you know, that's kind of a little oversimplified, but they would need someone to help administer the mm -hmm. living trust, but then all the assets are in one place. If they didn't do that and they passed away, then we have the dreaded probate process, which I would love to talk to you in another video about because that's a whole nother animal. But with a living trust, it essentially does protect, you know, someone that's living with all their assets, correct? Is that right? Correct. Well, while they're alive. So basically, Carolyn, if, if someone came to you and, you know, wanting to set up their living trust, what does that process entail? Okay. What it, it entails is um, it's like, I call it a package, a living trust package. Okay. And so what they get is they get the living trust, they get the last will and testament, and then they get the power of attorney, which is general to make the general decisions for banking decisions and things like that. 
and then the durable health care. And I always tell them to come up with a couple of family members because you're going to have like the successor trustee if there is a death. Okay. And usually if it's a husband and wife, it's going to pass to the wife. Okay. It's like in my mother's situation, I did their trust and you know, it passed over to my mother. The biggest mistakes that people um, do make is that they forget to put in, like let's say if there's a savings account, they forget to put that into the living trust. That means that that savings account has to be probated. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So if they leave a, an asset out, like one bank account, it would have to go through probate, but the rest of exactly. that's really interesting. That's and that's going to be a common mistake. And then also like if they have, you know, stocks, bonds, and there was an attorney that hired me years ago and he was trying to do this. And I think what he did is he forgot to record the deed, the deed to the property. And that is a huge thing with a living trust is you want to put it in the name of the family trust. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, like, you know, husband and wife individually, you want to definitely put your home into a living trust. That's like a must for California, you know. Oh my gosh. Huge. So basically yeah. Yeah. I need people to call you <laughs> so they don't come to me and having had it done wrong. So all your contact info is here. Um, everybody, please use Carolyn. She's fantastic. And she will really help protect you and your loved ones. And, uh, so I appreciate you explaining these things and I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So that's just the tip of the iceberg, what a living trust is. Essentially, you really need one if you own property in California. So in case something happens to your loved ones, don't have to go through the probate process to inherit that property. Carolyn Graber is a fantastic resource. As she said, she's been a paralegal for over 30 years in California. She knows her stuff. Her fees are going to be a lot more affordable than a traditional attorney. Don't hesitate to reach out to her. Reach out to me with any questions about real estate or anything. I'm here to help. I'm Annie Baker. And until next time, have a great one.